I wanted to debunk a major myth that has been perpetrated in our culture. You may have heard that milk products are fabulous for growing strong bones and just feeling generally healthy and preventing osteoporosis. If only this were true. As a result of propaganda, Canada's food guide, and multiple commercials, we've been led to really believe in this story. However, a lot of times when it comes to food, it's never so much about the food that determines whether or not it's good for us. A lot of the times it's about what's been done to the food, has it been altered in a certain way, has been modified, pasteurized, and what are the ramifications of that. So I have to bring you back to about 200 plus years ago, a nice story, um, to 1895. This was a time in North America where there was a huge demand for milk. And whenever there's demand, there's a need for more supply. And that was when pasteurization was essentially introduced as a way to have a shelf-stable product that had longevity and was able to be distributed to people without, um, without the implications of potentially having harmful bacteria in the milk. Now, once upon a time, there was raw milk, and this was something where you just took it directly from the animal, and you would either drink it as is, or the people might have changed it into something else. But the bottom line was, it was your animal, you took care of the environment, you would have a cleanly state, hopefully, to be able to have a product that did not have bad bacteria. However, when you're trying to deliver to a large scale of people, the, the game has to change a little bit, and that's where pasteurization comes into play. To give a little bit of a story and a background of the comparison between raw milk and pasteurized milk, I have to tell you this pretty interesting story. It was a long-term study that was done by Dr. Francis M. Pottinger on 900 cats. Now, this was clinical studies. They broke up these cats into two groups, cats who consumed pasteurized milk and cats who consumed raw milk. The cats that consumed raw milk, they were very healthy, very lively, friendly, and they lived a very long life, didn't have disease, just died of old age. Then you had the cats who consumed pasteurized milk on a regular basis. They were more likely to be lethargic, tired, and they died in a disease state a lot more prematurely. Now, what was cool about this study was it was done on about five generations of cats. So by the third generation of the cats who consumed the pasteurized milk, they were found to be infertile. Plus, having all those other generations where they weren't really living a full life, they were tired, they were exhausted, they weren't that lively, they weren't that playful, and this was a direct result of their consumption of pasteurized milk. Whereas into the third and fifth generations even of the cats who consumed raw milk, they were lively, playful, healthy, and were able to reproduce. It's pretty neat to see just the ramifications of what one food can do to a whole generation of animals. So now you bring us to the 21st century today where, okay, we have to deal with having pasteurized milk around us, but now we have no option to consuming raw milk because it is now illegal in Canada. Uh, you'll have to look that one up on your own time, but um, essentially the propaganda has gone to the government and it's no longer seen as something that's healthy. People will say you can get tuberculosis, different issues. This is true because if you don't have a clean environment, you don't have a clean product. What's very interesting is that once upon a time, back in 1895 when all of this was happening, there were dietitians and the whole dairy industry essentially, they were trying to outcry and say, no, we do not want pasteurization. So, very interesting point to make <laughs> that the whole industry didn't even want that to happen. But today, yes, we have pasteurization, so we have to deal with it. I'm going to put the negative effects of pasteurization on another video because this video is getting a little bit long. But there's some food for thought. Some websites that you can go and look up uh, on your own time. Um, Devil in the Milk. That's one book written by Thomas Cowan and Keith Woodward. Very interesting read on all the ramifications of consuming pasteurized milk. The other one uh, is Weston A. Price Foundation. Their website has fabulous information. Um, as well as betacasein.net. That has all the clinical research into why pasteurized milk is bad for you and what diseases have been linked to pasteurization of milk. So check those out and I'll put up the second video, part two, of why you should not be consuming pasteurized milk. Thanks.